Today, I will show you how to create an Angular Gantt chart using DHTMLX Gantt, add it into a small application, and bind it to the REST API on the back end. We'll write in TypeScript, since it's a recommended way, although it can be done in plain JavaScript. In this tutorial, we won't cover server-side logic of data saving. Instead, we'll emulate the back end using the Angular in-memory web API tool. You can download a complete Angular Gantt chart demo from GitHub and find a link to the code in the description below. To set up a development environment, we'll use Angular CLI. To create an app skeleton, run the following command. You'll be asked to pick a preset, add Angular routing or not, style sheet type. Select the necessary options to configure the system to your needs. After that, we can go to the app directory and run the application. The ng-serve command builds the application, starts a local server that watches for changes in the application source code, and automatically rebuilds the application as needed. Now, if we open our local host, we should see the initial page. Now, let's create the Gantt component. First, we should get the DHTMLX Gantt chart code. Run the following command in order to add Gantt. To add Gantt to the Angular app, we should create a new component. For this, run the following command. In the newly created Gantt component file, we will add the next lines of code. Here, we've defined our new component. It can be used with the Gantt tag. When an element is loaded, it initializes Gantt inside the container. We'll declare Gantt styles in a separate Gantt component CSS file. Next, we can add a new component to the page. Open the app component HTML file and add the following code. Now, if we open the page, we should see an empty Gantt chart. The next step is to add data loading to our Angular Gantt chart. For this, we'll add the task and link services, but let's create data structure models first. For creating the task model, run the following command. In the newly created task file, we will add the next lines of code. Then, create the link model and add the following code to the link file. Now, let's create our services. Service is a class responsible for doing a specific task. Angular services can be injected using the dependency injection mechanism and include data, function, or some features necessary for your application. We're going to create a data service that we'll use to populate our Gantt chart with tasks. For creating the task service, run the following command. In the newly created task service file, we will add the next lines of code. We've added the injectable decorator to our service. It marks a class available to an injector for instantiation. We'll inject it to our component further. Currently, it returns the resolve promise with hard-coded data, but you can load the data from the server side and return the promise. Then create the link service and add the following code to the link service file. This service is pretty much the same as a task service. Now, open our Gantt component file. We should add the task service and link service classes to our component. First, let's add the necessary imports for our services. Also, we should add the provider's property to the component decorator argument. It tells Angular to create fresh instances of our services when it creates a new Gantt component. So, our component can use those services to get tasks and links. Now, we can inject our services to the component. For this purpose, add the following constructor to the Gantt component class and the following code into the ngOnInit function. Here, we've added the date format config definition. It sets the data format of the loading tasks. Also, here we call our services to get a function and then wait for a response to add data to Gantt. The Gantt parse method accepts data objects of the following structure. We should get the similar code in our Gantt component file. Now, if we open an app, we should see our tasks from a link between them. Now, let's move to the part with data saving. To help us with that, Gantt offers a simple callback that can capture user-initiated changes to tasks or links within the Gantt chart. In an Angular environment, this callback can be easily connected to an Angular service, enabling efficient synchronization of the Gantt chart with the overall application state. In this tutorial, we'll implement simple services for tasks and links that will emulate interaction with the backend and connect them to the Gantt. First, we should install Angular in-memory web API. For this, run the following command. 
open the app module file to add in-memory web API module and define our mock database initialization. We will create the necessary class in the next step. For now, our code should look like that. For creating in-memory data service, run the following command. In the newly created in-memory data service file, we will add the next lines of code. Then, let's create a helper for our requests. For that, create the service helper file with the following code. The handle error function will put an error to the console in case of some errors. Then, we need to update our service to handle the adding, updating, and deleting of items. Open the task service file and put the following code into it. We've defined the task URL as a private element of our service. It contains a URL to our REST API. In order to send HTTP requests, We've injected HTTP class to our service. To insert a new item, we send a POST request to our URL with a new task in the body. To update an item, we send a PUT request to the URL that includes the item's identifier. This request also contains an updated task in the body. To remove an item, we send a DELETE request to the URL that includes the item's identifier. In this case, an item with such ID will be removed. Now, open the link service file and update our link service. It's pretty much the same as task service and provides the same API for links. In the Gantt component file, we need to connect these services to our Gantt. Note that we wrap it inside the IF statement. This is a required step when a free or individual version of the library is used within a framework. In these versions, Gantt is available as a singleton object that can't be destroyed and recreated. Thus, each time the Angular app creates and destroys instances of the Gantt component, it will use the same object of Gantt that will carry configuration made in previous iterations. In order to avoid unwanted side effects of this setup, we need to ensure that some parts of the configuration, namely attachment of event handlers and the data processor callback, are done only once when the Gantt is created for the first time. It can be done by assigning some custom property to the Gantt object and checking it later, so we could tell whether it's the first time when the component is initialized. If using Gantt under the commercial, enterprise, or ultimate licenses, we can create a new Gantt object, configure it when starting the component, and destroy the created Gantt when exiting the component. Thus, each launch of the component will start with a clean Gantt, and the check will not be needed. Here, we've defined a data processor handler that will capture changes made in Gantt by the user and transfer them to data services. The handler can be declared either as a function or a router object. We've used the latter approach here. Gantt accepts the promise response from the handler to correctly process the completion of an action. If your service changes a task or link ID after creating a new record, which it usually does, make sure that your promise returns an object with the database ID of the inserted record so Gantt could apply it. Keep in mind that in this demo, we've used Angular in-memory API library to emulate the data storage, but in real life, you'll probably want to save changes to the real database. In order to do that, you'll either need to remove in-memory web API API from the app or configure it to pass requests through to the real backend and implement a data storage. That's it. Today I have shown you how to use DHTMLX Scan with Angular, add it to a small app, and bind it to the backend. Download the full source code of the Angular Gantt chart demo in our GitHub repository. Watch other tutorials devoted to client-side and server-side integration and Gantt configuration. Browse DHTMLX Gantt webpage and download a free 30-day trial version. Our tech support team will be eager to help you during the evaluation.